Good Monday morning. I hope you had a great weekend, enjoyed the Lord's Day, and looking forward to a productive week this week, the first full week of August. Um, my name is Mike Courtney, and every Monday I do a quick little video called Monday Matters about things that hopefully help your life to be happier, healthier, and maybe holier. Um, and today we're going to talk about something that I think uh, certainly does make our life holier. We started uh, yesterday at our church, uh, the church that I attend, a 21-day emphasis on prayer and fasting. Because of that, last week, if you watch the Monday Matters, uh, last week I uh, did a, a, little, a short little video on on prayer, on, on how to pray for your children particularly. It's the first week of school and we're talking about praying, so I talked about how to pray for your children. So today I thought I would follow up with that and talk about the other half of that uh, uh, formula of fasting. We don't we don't deal with fasting a lot in the church. Uh, probably a kind of a lost art, but I think it's important. I think some great things happen when we do that. And so I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about about fasting today. How you go about it, what it means, why it's important, those kinds of things. Uh, one of the things that I believe about this little media. Uh, part of the reason I'm doing this, I guess, is, uh, you know, we our, 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 our pastor does a great job on Sunday morning. He's a great preacher. Uh, he has 25 to 35 minutes once a week, and there's no way he can go in-depth into some of the things of the faith. How do we? He can say to us, you need to do this, but, but he doesn't have time to, to say, oh, how do we do this? How do we go into this? And, and there, I always say there are brand new people there who can't spell fasting, and there are people there who've heard it all before. And so trying to do all that in a Sunday morning sermon is just impossible. So, so part of this Monday Matters is taking some things that we might not have time to talk about in a, another setting and talking about it in a little greater detail. So today, that, fasting. Let me just say, and I'm not going to read it, I'm not even going to go into it, but I would encourage you, if you're considering fasting, I would encourage you to read Isaiah 58 and, and spend a little time in that, peruse that a little bit. And Isaiah talks about why fasting works and why it doesn't work, and here's how you should do it, and here's how you're doing it wrong, and those kinds of things. So, so a lot of this is based on Isaiah 58. I'm not going to read that, but um, Isaiah 58, be a good little Bible study for you if you're thinking about entering into a time of fasting. Why do we fast? Uh, that's, that's one of the questions. What's, why, what is the big deal about fasting? Why do we do that? I think there are three things that happen when we fast that are absolutely crucial. One is it humbles us. There's something about fasting, about, about, about giving up and making yourself needy and be, becoming vulnerable. That is, that is humbling, and, and fasting is a way for me to break through the stranglehold that my own pride, my own flesh has on my life, and to, and to humble myself before God. So it humbles us. The second thing that it does is it honors God. He, he, he tells us to do that, both Old Testament and New Testament. He tells us to fast, and in some ways just assumes Jesus says when he's teaching in Luke uh, chapter 11, I think it is, he says, when you fast, he's just, he's just assuming you're going to do this, when you fast. So it, it, it's, it's honoring to God that I am willing to be serious enough about my walk to give something up, to inconvenience myself in some way. It honors God. And then the third thing is it hones my ability to hear it, it, it gets me in tune with the voice of God, and I am, and I am able to, to hear the voice of God better when I fast. It humbles, it honors, it, it hones, and so that's why we fast. Uh, here, a quick note of what fasting is not. Here's, fasting is not a diet. It's not a cleanse. Those are, the, those are trendy things now. It's not that. Now, if, if that comes out of that, if that's a byproduct, that's okay. But don't say, I'm going to fast for 21 days because I want to lose five pounds. That's not a fast. That's a diet. And, and there's nothing wrong with a diet. But that's not the spiritual exercise of, of fasting. Um, how do we fast? Here, here are, I, I'm, sure, I, I'm sure there are far more types of fast than I know about. 
But here are, th are three or four with some labels that might be helpful. One is a sunset fast. It's kind of based on the, the, the Jewish day, the end of the, the day being at, the, at sunset. And so it's just basically taking a period of time and not eating during that period of time uh, if eating is the thing you're fasting, not eating and then fasting and, and then eating after that. So maybe I go all day, uh, don't eat breakfast, don't eat lunch, and then I eat supper. Uh, so it's a sunset fast. It's not, it's giving up something through the course of the day to be more attuned to God, to honor God, to humble myself before God. And then at a given period of time, you can do that for one meal. You can do that for a couple of meals. You can do that for the whole day, but it's, it's a, it's a period of time, sunset fast. I, I'm I'm not going to eat from the time I get up in the morning until the sun goes down, and then I'll and then I'll eat for the first time. It's one type of fast. Another type of fast that's been popular over the last ten years or so is the Daniel fast. You remember in the story of Daniel, where Daniel only ate fruits and nuts and and vegetables that nobody would want to eat, leeks and those kinds of things. Uh, but but it's so it's it's eating something but giving up something. The Daniel fast, um, we can do that by saying, okay, I'm not going to eat, uh, I'm not going to eat bread for the month. I'm going to give up desserts. Uh, I leaned over to Doris in church today and said, God has laid it on my heart to give up anchovies and cabbage for this fasting period. I'm going to give up that. Uh, it's it's but it's giving something up. It's eating something but giving something up the daniel fast where i i take a part of my diet perhaps and and give that up sunset fast daniel fast an absolute fast would be where i just fast i don't eat anything I, a, a true absolute fast might be not eating or drinking now let me caution you if you do that that should not be more than a day or two uh our, our body can go a lot longer without eating than it can without drinking so make sure you don't go along with that but, but it's a, an absolute fast, e either not eating or drinking or only drinking uh, a protein drink or a, or a, a smoothie or, or only just water. But, but it's absolutely giving up food. Most of the time, now this is strictly according to me. I, I, I couldn't find anywhere where it says this is what they're supposed to be. But my experience has been most of the time a sunset fast where we, I'm going to fast, you know, a certain period of time. That's usually 21 days to 31 days. That's usually three to four weeks. Um, the Daniel fast is usually a, a 30 day to a 90 day fast that I'm gonna give up certain part of my diet for 30 to 90 days. The absolute fast, three to seven days. Several years ago, I uh, took on a 40 day fast. I'm not eating for 40 days, I drank, I drank protein drinks and things like that. Actually, that was that was 15 years ago. So that's the start of branches. But uh, most of the time, it's three to seven days. And then the last fast that's kind of become popular is what some people would call soul fasting. And that's not giving up food, but that's giving up something else. In particular, in this day and age, Facebook, television, those kinds of things. So I'm giving up something from my soul. Sunset fast, Daniel fast, absolute fast and, and soul fast. Those are some different ways to fast or any combination of those. So last thing, very quickly. So how how do I go about fasting? How do I begin? I, I jotted down five things that I think might be important as you begin to consider fasting. Number one, start slow. Don't go crazy. Uh, maybe you start by saying, I'm going to skip a meal uh, every day for, uh, for 21 days. Start slow. Do something something that's manageable, something that you'll do, something you'll complete, but start slow. When you start, by the way, I would encourage you to get a, a, a piece of paper, a notebook, something, and write down, here's why I am fasting. I'm, I'm not fasting to lose five pounds. I'm fasting because I want my children to get back in church. Here's why I'm fasting. And and write that down very specifically, and then and then write down through the course of that time what God says to you, what you see happen, what the response is. Uh, but start slow, work your way into uh, fasting. The second thing, I would include the soul fast with some type of physical fast. Uh, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, I pray that your whole body, soul, and spirit. I would, I would take into consideration 
the physical me, I'm going to give up some food. The mental me, I'm going to give up Facebook, give up television. The spiritual me, I'm going to spend more time in prayer, whatever it is. I would include body, soul, and spirit in my fast. Uh, third thing, which I just alluded to, replace the time. Use the time. Okay, every evening I spend about 30 minutes on Facebook. Perusing. Okay, I'm going to give that up. I'm going to spend 30 minutes reading my Bible. Or during my uh, lunchtime, I'm going to skip lunch every day. And during that lunchtime, I'll go out to my car. I'm going to sit and pray for 45 minutes. Replace the time with a spiritual exercise, particularly with prayer. But uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, number four, develop a habit. We're talking about doing a 21-day fast. Good for you. But I encourage you, our pastor said uh, yesterday in the sermon, which is a really good point, make it a lifestyle. Develop a habit of fasting. I would encourage you to fast every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take 20 minutes in the morning and spend time with God. That's a type of a fast. I'm going to set aside time for it every day. I would encourage you to fast every week. Every week I'm going to give up lunch on Wednesday and pray for my children. Every week is some kind of fast. And I would encourage you to fast every year some type of traditional, maybe more long-term fast. We do a 21-day fast at our church in August. We do a 21-day fast in, in uh, January. And so uh, develop a habit. Make it habitual that I surrender these things for God. Which leads me to the, to the last point, and that is make it a tradition, not just make it a a habit, but make it a tradition. Make this something that is a part of my life, and every year I have a significant spiritual adventure, a significant time to do that. Here's a shameless plug, but about twice a year I do a 40-day spiritual adventure, kind of a writing, devotional, blog kind of thing, and very often include in that a fasting. Uh, but I would encourage you to look for something like that to make it a tradition. Uh, I don't say this often, but if you want to know more about this, it might be good to go to uh, our our pastor's sermon from Sunday, uh, Family Worship Center, Family Worship Center dot com, Family WC dot com. I think it is, uh, and look for his sermon. And that he also has a great little uh, podcast that he does uh, that you could find a link from that. But I to, to hear more about that. Uh, he did a great job, and he's leading us in that, so I'd encourage you to do something like that. Uh, also, if, if you like this, I, I do blogs, I do YouTube, I do Facebook kind of thing, and so connecting all that. That was a lot more plug than I meant. I wanted, I wanted to close with this quote. Uh, Pastor Bryce read this yesterday, and, and I, I just loved it. I was so moved by it that I wanted to share it with you. As a G.K. Chesterton quote, and I'll, I'll just... Uh, moment of explanation at the end of it. Because children have abounding vitality, because they are in spirit fierce and free, therefore they want things repeated and unchanged. They always say, do it again. And the grown-up person does it again until he is nearly dead. For grown-up people are not strong enough to exult in monotony. But perhaps God is strong enough to exult in monotony. It is possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun. And every evening, do it again to the moon. <clears throat> it may not be automatic necessity that makes all daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never gotten tired of making them. It may be that he has the eternal appetite of infancy. For we have sinned and grown old, and our Father is younger than we. Isn't that a great thought? There's something about doing it again, fasting again, starting again. God loves that. Well, think about fasting. Man, this has been a much longer video. I apologize for that. I'm trying to do it in seven minutes. I went twice that. Have a great day. God bless you, and I'll talk to you next Monday.